Commissioner Castro. Chair. Commissioner Castro. Oh, here. Commissioner Wrinkle. Here. Commissioner Morris. <laughs> Commissioner Morris. I'm it, look, it looks like he's muted. Yeah. Is is that him for sure, Amenia? That's his phone number. Yes. Confirming that he is um, possibly driving, though. So just type, it might not be able for him to chime in. OK, uh, Commissioner Mikulak. Can you unmute yourself? Commissioner Mikulak? Yes, here. Commissioner Hol Holton? Uh, here. Commissioner Viela? Here. Commissioner Bernal? Yes. Uh, and two vacancies. You have a quorum, Madam Chair. Great. Thank you so much. So we'll go on to the approval of the agenda. Um, I just want to make sure under matters of the chair, we do have site visit reports. Um, if anyone wants to do those on the agenda that everyone has. Mm, I don't have that on my agenda, but site reports. Here, chair, that the uh, chair agenda was left blank so that you could discuss any items that you would like. Oh, perfect. So I will like to, I'll add that. Um, so I just want anybody who has a report on site visits that has an opportunity and wants to share can share under there. You need a motion to approve the agenda, Madam Chair. Give me one second. I, is anybody else going to add anything to the agenda? I think maybe under matters of the committee, um, there might be a report about the mayor's awards that we want to add. Yeah. You don't have to add them to the agenda. You can just bring them up as you wish. OK, perfect. Okay. Then I will move to approve the agenda. OK. A second. Wait, hold, uh, point of order, Commissioner Mikula had her hand up. Yes, that's after the second she needs to speak. Okay, so we had a second. Go ahead, Commissioner Mikula. Um, uh, just that I will be reporting on two, two uh, site visits. And I, uh, yes, I move. Are you, ready? Are you ready for the vote, Madam Chair? I am. Commissioner Castro? Actually, I think I don't vote, right? You vote on these procedural items. You don't vote when you're um, passing items okay. unless there's a, a tie. So yes. I Commissioner Wrinkle? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner yes. Mikulak? Thank you, yes. Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Holton? Commissioner Holton. <laughs> yes. Commissioner, thank you. thank you. Commissioner Viela. Yes. Commissioner Bernal. Yes. Motion passes. Beautiful. Did everybody get a chance to take a look at the minutes from last meeting? Anything we want to discuss on these minutes? Uh, Chair Castro. Um, Go ahead, and, yes, if, if I may. Um, I have um, one, one comment on page six. Um, it's the, uh, I guess the third paragraph from the bottom, uh, the last, uh, and this is where I am, I am speaking, it says there are fundamental changes in this document, uh, and that's referring to the ordinance as to the role of the commission. The department has represented those changes. We have not. I think that should read as that the department has been represented by council regarding those changes and that the commission has not. And I would ask that the minutes uh, <clears throat> be amended to reflect that correction. 
I will do that, Commissioner. Sorry, I'm on my phone, so I'm kind of scrolling through. Anybody else have any comments? No. Um, okay, so then I will move to approve the minutes from last meeting. You're making the motion, Chair? Okay. I would need a second. 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 Okay, Commissioner. Can vote on that. Uh, Chair Castro. Yes. Commissioner Wrinkle. Yes. Commissioner Morris. Yes. Commissioner Mikulak. Yes. Commissioner Holton. Yes. Commissioner Viela. Yes. Commissioner Bernal. Yes. Motion passes. Awesome. So if anybody ha doesn't have anything else on that, we're going to move on to matters from the chair, which I kind of mentioned. I want to make room for anyone who wants to report on site visits. I know we've had a few this past week. Um, or if you have any like questions on guidance on how to do that, um, thank you, Commissioner Viella, for uploading to the Dropbox uh, just an example of what M kind of produced for our site visits. And so if you guys want to use that, feel free, but it's not by any means the way you have to do it. Uh, Commissioner Mikulak, did you want to start us off since you had a couple? Yes, um, I have two site visits and I very um, was very open with the questions. I sort of followed the format, but we also took trajectories outward as they applied to the questions. Um, I met with both the Desert Corral and with Los Bolindrinas. And um, I'm writing up a report because we spent an hour and a half <laughs> for both of the site visits talking and exploring um, each of the six questions, but also taking the questions further. Um, so just in summary, one of the most interesting things was that both organizations felt that they were very concerned at the beginning of the pandemic in terms of their sustainability, if they were going to be able to continue um, reaching out to people or if people would respond. And what they found is that they increased their uh, audience participation. And um, that was really surprising. And it also therefore gave them lots of new opportunities for advertising and the ways in which they're going to be advertising, which I will be um, explaining in detail. Um, and how they're also looking, therefore, how to expand what they're actually doing. I know that the Los Colindrinas is um, selling out their events throughout the, uh, for the most part, throughout the pandemic and that they're really making it a uh, priority to reach to the local um, state and then national level as well in terms of what they're doing. So is the Desert Corral. I was very, very impressed with a lot of the programming that they're doing. And um, we talked about ways, one of, the, one of the great concerns, there are two concerns in ways that they felt that the Arts Commission could help them. One of them was um, in reaching out to, to communities, the funding that's needed, um, my understanding was that it should increase a bit because of uh, they're also building up their technology in order to do the kinds of advertising and the kinds of presentations that they're doing virtually. So uh, that was one concern. Um, and they also were concerned about the February deadline for their grants. According to the people I spoke to, they usually apply in March. And so this was quite a stressful experience. They're understaffed, just like, um, you know, we are here in this um, arts and culture department. So, I mean, it was really pleasant. The Desert Corral, we spoke a lot about what they could do in order to reach out to the South Side, talking about local rappers and working with the, um, the Coral um, Desert Corral and also the conductor. So um, them going out and out doing outreach into the communities to find out what it is they'd like to do. 
um, I was very impressed with their energy and their dedication to what they're doing. So um, I hope to have those reports to you in about a week. How exciting, that sounds awesome. Um, and actually some overlap with some of ours. I don't know, does anyone else wanna report before Ann and I, we were both on the same site visit, so we might do a little bit of a dual report. Um, no? Yes, I, I, I want okay. to give my report, a little talk. Yes, I- Okay, we have men. Am I muted? No. Okay. No. Um, Yes, I visited with uh, SFAI, uh, with CCA and Entre Flamenco. Uh, it was really a wonderful experience, I, I, for me at least, and I think for them as well. They were really overjoyed that someone from the Arts Commissioner was either an Arts Commissioner or someone from the department was visiting with them. Uh, and I would say uh, directly to, uh, I'm not, not going to mention two, but two of the organizations, Pauline, uh, made comments about uh, not hearing from you or the department of what they were doing or showing more interest, which I was surprised. My answer to them was, it's pandemic, you know, it's the uh, virus. We, sent, we cannot, you're not expect the department to be as involved as it used to be before. But um, everything was positive. They're, they're happy. I'm really surprised to see their effort behind, you know, these, these hard times. It's, it's a lot of hardship in what they're doing. Uh, the new, what's her name? I think I mentioned to Paul. Uh, Danielle means it's a new as a new uh, person, new person in charge of the CCA. Um, I think she came on board last um, last summer, and she's had uh, Marietta, I forget the lady's last name, uh, the artist uh, that they have a display there, uh, is doing a wonderful work considering you know what they have and that what they could do with this space. Um, but overall, it was very positive, and what they're looking for is more support from us you know, and what they're doing, that uh, one comment that this lady said, uh, Danielle said, is that, you know, if, if we look at the silver lining and what's happened is how for, for I mean, her, her main source of revenue used to be the theater and the movies, how she's now reaching out to Violet Crown and seeing what movies they're making, when did they say have it? So there's a connection that which it didn't have before of how they can function to better serve the community and be part, integral part of, you know, the arts and culture and what we're doing. So overall it was wonderful. Again, I started writing the report, but again, I, I almost spent an hour with, with each one of them. Uh, and uh, so I need to type that up and, and send it in. Uh, should I send that to Pauline or co uh, copy all of you? How, how do we do that? I think we I'm were like, sending it to send it to Pauline. The report. I think I, I think so. And then I we'll put it on the Dropbox. Is that right? Chair Castro, Commissioner Bernal, um, for centralization, communication should go to uh, Ms. Tapia. And then we will then present it up for upload to Commissioner Villela. Okay. But rest assured that I will also get those reports and be reviewing them. Okay. Commissioner uh, as far as CCA is concerned, they have their own programming with the uh, Cinematech, uh, the film program there, and they're showing some really great films. Commissioner um, Holton, I think uh, Commissioner Mikulak had her hand up. I'm sorry. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry I interrupted. I didn't see that. Um, Commissioner Brunel? Yes. I wanted to say that that was one of the things you mentioned was key to both of the organizations I did a site visit with, which was they felt like they needed to hear more from the arts and culture department, um, even if it was just a kind of email or a check-in, um, but they felt like they were kind of struggling on the outside here and they really wanted to um, have more information and contact with the arts and culture department. <clears throat> and that was asked from both of them. Um, Chair Castro, Commissioner Mikulak, and Commissioner Bernal, just so that you know, when the pandemic started, the Arts and Culture Department, we established bi-weekly meetings for all, not only the grantees, but arts and culture um, organizations. And so that was the meeting that we were having all the way, we went from two weeks, and then within the second year of the pandemic, we met, we moved to every three weeks. Um, and then that stopped in December, and so we have not reinitiated that. So 
I'm not sure if they've not been receiving the emails, but if we were to reinitiate those check-ins, we will definitely let that happen because that was a great opportunity for us to have organizations talk together for us as staff to hear feedback from them. We did a lot of changes based on their feedback to the cultural investment funding program. So we definitely will reach out to those, uh, at least four organizations for sure, who have um, dropped off by the wayside to make sure that you know, the, the correct staffing is receiving the email notifications. So I hear that loud and clear. But I wanna let you know that we did make a huge effort as the department and we still have a lot of work to do, obviously. Did you wanna to respond to that, Commissioner Kulak, or was it a different thought? Yes, um, Director Kamiata, I wanted to let you know that one of the, it was the Desert Corral, I believe, who is down to two staffs two people and there's no assistant to write the grants and there's the National Endowment for the Arts grants that are also coming up. So she said she just couldn't make those meetings, but she realized that they were, that, that they were offered. Um, so, you know, I think there's scheduling problems also due to the pandemic. There was no, no blame. It wasn't like, you know, why aren't they contacting us? I didn't get that kind of um, feeling. It was, that they wanted to have more contact. And they just were stressed as you all are. <laughs> Thank you. I, I see your hand, Commissioner Wrinkle. Uh, Commissioner Holton, did you still have that thought? I just wanted to um, add a <clears throat> very briefly something to what uh, Commissioner Bernal said. And uh, the, the film program has been very difficult uh, for everybody, we're all really streaming. We've forgotten how to go to movies. Um, but the Jewish Film Festival and the Santa Fe Film Festival uh, both utilize CCA's uh, two theaters to put on their programs. So notwithstanding the difficulties that we're having, they are, you know, making outreach to make their facilities available to other uh, arts organizations and the film community available. Yeah, so I think that's to, there be, to be commended for that. Commissioner Rick. Uh, yes. Um, to, Sorry, uh, go ahead, Commissioner uh, Bernard. Uh, what I wanted to say is I think perhaps if, if we can find a way uh, through the department um, to get uh, not reports, but to get uh, uh, to learn about the activities that these grantees are, are getting into or offering the events are offering, which will be a way for us to support uh, their effort. Uh, Stephanie from the Entre Flamenco, she says our first show, it's March 18th, and I wrote it down and got a couple of tickets just to show, not that I'm interested in the flamenco, but I think it's support. I'll just, you know, be a, be a, a, a date uh, with my wife, a night out, and, and, and support the organization. And uh, the same thing, you know, I don't know about the films, you know, because I'm not too happy to be sitting in an auditorium. And by the way, she mentioned, Paul, that uh, the, they have two auditoriums for those, for, for those of you who don't remember or don't know. I think it's 111 for the big one, and I think it's 56 on the second one, the small one. Uh, they're trying to fill, you know, at half or a third capacity. There's no way their numbers, you know, they can make it work money-wise with those, those uh, uh, that kind of attendance. But nonetheless, you know, like Paul just mentioned, uh, Commissioner uh, Holton just mentioned, you know, it's an opportunity to support the, these these folks, which I think they have great um, uh, programs that can benefit, you know, uh, the community. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Vernal. Um, and that's super exciting. I'm sorry, you went, met with CCA, with Arte Flamenca, and what was the third? The uh, SFAI, that's, SFAI. Uh, that's um, Jamie, I forget her last name. And uh, CCA is uh, Danielle, and then C uh, and then the Flamenco is Stephanie. Awesome, thank you so much, Commissioner Wrinkle. Did you have something to say? Uh, yes, Director Kamiyama, Chair Castro. Um, this is kind of going back and forth on a couple of different topics uh, of discussion, but I just wanted to share that one of my uh, site visits included a comment on your meetings, uh, the Chamber Music Festival. Um, referred to you know, the meetings that you would have bi-weekly back in the day and said that they were, um, and I remember attending those myself, they were very helpful. Um, 
but they really would appreciate a sort of structure with an agenda on specific topics because that could be a very good networking tool for um, organizations to learn something new, new opportunities um, in the field, and they uh, advance notice, you know, um, giving them some structure. Um, they mentioned how, uh, as a model, um, and I don't get these emails, but they did mention Liz Camacho from the Economic Development Department sends out a weekly or biweekly um, uh, notice of, of news and relevance to the field. Um, and they use that as an example. So, you know, good work on the meetings. Maybe those could be useful in a less frequent, but more audience commanding um, context, you know, to reach out and keep, keep our fundies uh, close. And I think maybe um, Commissioner Wrinkle, we can talk a little bit also about um, some of the site visits that we did together, because I think there's been a lot of themes around communication, um, trying to network. I think that a lot of organizations are interested in creating some work with other organizations and building bridges, but they're not quite sure exactly how to do that sometimes. Um, a lot of the funding that they're getting, for example, the funding cycle this time is a little earlier than they're used to. And then they're also at the same time. So if they wanted to apply for multiple grants at the same time, they have to do double the work in a shorter amount of time. Um, was that kind of the basis that we were covering? Um, specifically, I'm thinking about the Santa Fe Film Festival because they are looking at traditional funding grants as well as digital marketing. And so they're having to put some of those in at the same time. And Pro Musica also mentioned that it was a little bit of a tight time frame. Sorry, Director Kamiyama, have you heard any of that from fundees that the time frame is a little bit tight, that the changes are a little bit rough for them? Chair Castro, I'm going to um, defer to Ms. Tapia. Um, she's in closer contact and managing that program. I do want to state that this is our way of getting our program back on track. Um, during the pandemic, we were delayed, and so funding actually was supposed to start July 1st, but the applications came out very late. And so they were funded for only half a year. So this is our effort to get the applications out early, to allow for panels, to allow for contracting and or purchase ordering. And so the budget to come through so that on July 1, the organizations are ready to go. But we do hear the um, concern about the other deadlines, um, but I'll let Ms. Tapia answer regarding any feedback. Um, thank you, Chair and Commissioners. I have not been given that feedback. I have been given feedback on this new cycle that's gone out um, that was released on January 11th of 2022 and is due on February 24th of 2022. Um, this cycle, you know, we really pushed to get that out earlier to allow more time for applicants to apply. That was not um, something we were able to do into the past, in the past due to a revamping and restructuring of the entire program. But we're always working to kind of give more time um, with each cycle that we come up, uh, open up. So. This one is definitely on track as it has been in the past um, to allow more time and allow that funding freed up for the beginning of the new fiscal year and ready to, to be released and awarded. Commissioner Mickey, like you have your hand up. Um, yes, thank you, <clears throat> um, Chair Castro. One of the issues that came up in terms of um, a complicated issue that has to do with uh, the genres or what we call historical periods in art. And that was with the Desert Corral. And you're dealing with highly professional people, that is people who have done a lot of training in terms of singing and um, working with masters in terms of their voice. And so the chart and Community Connect, all of this working together to try to do an outreach to all levels of people is a very complex conversation to have. And uh, in my report, I will outline the kinds of things we discussed and 
the innovations that they were uh, really interested in um, applying in terms of what we tend to erroneously, from my perspective, say everyday people as opposed to the master. And so that is an issue that it's not an issue. It was a topic that really required me and them to, to explore this very necessary discussion. And I think that was a really important discussion to have, especially in terms of what our motivations are moving forward. So in terms of like access and what I'm hearing is feedback, um, sorry, Ms. Tapia, from folks, the cycle is on, on the time cycle that we want it. We're trying to get things out early. We are trying to get these, um, I guess we're working with the small site committees. Is that how we're moving forward with this next grant cycle, Director? Sorry. Are we going to selection committees for this cycle that ends on the 24th? Correct. So um, panels are being formed and those will meet um, starting in the uh, February 28th, that kind of timeline um, in order to get awards out by the beginning of March or at least notified by the beginning of March. Um, awards will be started on July 1st. Sorry for that um, correction. So we'll be at least oh. able to, to meet with panels um, end of February, beginning of March to uh, select those awardees that will be awarded for fiscal year 23. And you don't think you haven't seen smaller numbers, you haven't seen any change in terms of the amount of applicants that you've received? Not at this time, no. Um, there's always, you know, uh, it's, it's kind of fluctuates in the numbers of what we have. Um, you'll have people that's uh, organizations that start an application, but you know, may not finish it all the way through and we cannot accept those applications. So it varies down to when we get to the last day and the last time to submit. But as far as right now, we have a good group of submissions for both categories and a lot of interest. Um, I've received plenty of calls from different organizations that we haven't really worked with in the past, um, or at least not recently, and shown their interest in the programs that we're offering this cycle and wanting to be a part of that. So I would say it's um, very positive this cycle this year and always looking for, for more of that. Great. Congratulations. Okay, Commissioner Wrinkle, you have your hand up. Okay, I have two um, direction directives. One is that the, the visits that I conducted, two of which were with Alma, um, you know, the groups in general did say they would appreciate more um, communication and overlap um, amongst themselves to, since the collaborative grant making is such an emphasis this year and it's, you know, increasing last year, but increasing this year. Um, I think that they would appreciate some kind of connectivity around that um, to help them figure out what partnerships they might want to take up, um, especially if they're new or un, you know, unfamiliar um, organizations. So um, also perhaps uh, sharing of demographics and metrics used by the Arts Commission. If there was a, if there was a um, um, set of assumptions or formulas that you all use, um, you know, if that is helpful to the other groups or a, a set up as a template. Um, and then one commented about, could it be, would it be possible for there to be de different deadlines now that the organizations are able to apply for both types of grants? Because it's a lot of work on the staff, you know, of the, of the organizations to, sub to support, you know, f two full application methodologies. Um, you mentioned, um, I think Mrs. Tapia, you mentioned um, the upcoming panels for the next grant cycle, correct? And they'll be convening? Yes, that uh, is at some correct. Point, yes, at some that's point correct. after February 28th, right? Yes, um, panelists have been reached out to and, and are in the conversation of when those dates will be taking place. And so that is moving forward. And will there be training of those people? There will be, yes. We have an orientation set up on um, February 24th to review how, the process, how it works for those that are new. We do have some members that have been there on the past, um, but for those that are on there that are new, we will go through an orientation to guide them through the process. Great, thank you so much. Any other comments, reports back, um, site visits? 
Madam Chair? Yes. May I possibly ask two things? Can I have the names of who you and, and Commissioner Wrinkle visited so I can make the minutes consistent? And then also there's a, someone signed in under Bob B and I need that name for the minutes, that full name of the lady signed in as Bob. Um, it's Dear, Joanne Balzer. Joanne. Elizabeth. Joanne Balzer, B-A-L-Z-E-R. Oh, Elizabeth. Thank you. Joanne yes. will be presenting on tonight's um, meeting, but oh. for some reason my Zoom seems to be letting in members automatically and I don't know how to stop that and I can't remove them. So yeah, I see Matthew Chase Daniel is a member of the public, correct? Or yes. So okay. um, I will be working to fix that issue, but just to let you know that those two are on here. Thank you. And if I can have the names of who you visited for the minutes, <laughs> it's going to be um, Santa Fe Pro Musica and the Pro Santa Fe Independent Pro Musica P R O Music M U S I C A and Santa Fe Independent Film Festival. Those are the ones you did, uh, Madam Chair? Correct, yes. And Chair and Ms. Uh, Commissioner Wrinkle? Yes, I visited with those two with Alma. And then I also visited with the George O'Keefe Museum and the, um, oh, the Chamber Music, which was an error, actually. They didn't receive a grant. But, okay. But I visited with them anyway, and I got lots of information. Thank you. Commissioner, Commissioner Viela. Um, I have an appointment to meet with Site Santa Fe on Friday, so I will report back. Very cool. And I also have one more that I need to do with the Youth Symphony that I need to schedule. Thank you. Uh, I have two that I'm in the process of scheduling, um, and I will report back on those as well. Sure. Perfect. Go ahead. Yes, my question will be to Ms. Tapia to see if there are any other side visits that need to be done. Do we have any pending uh, locations, uh, Ms. Tapia, please? Commissioner Bernal, um, members, yes, there are some organizations that still need to have uh, arts commissioners visit them. I can um, send out an updated list of those that have been completed and those that still would, are open and available. And if the commissioners have more time, they are welcome to, to take those on as well. Thank you, I appreciate that. Like I said, I'll be on travel on, on the 23rd, but if I can schedule one or two in before I go, you know, because I feel that the, uh, it's for the benefit, of, but it's really been for mine. I'm getting more out of it, really, understanding what they're doing, that we can, they, they've they expressed that they're really happy to see the commissioners visit with them and, and listen to the stories. But to me, it's been much, far more rewarding than what we, we, off, we can offer them. Oh, great so to I hear that. And you send me that. Yeah. Thank you so much for participating. I know it's very important. And, and I thank all of you for taking the time. And I would welcome anyone else who wants to join more, please. You know, it, it's a great opportunity. And we will always have more of these site visits in the upcoming cycle. Um, but, you know, we may not have some of the same organizations. And it's great to visit what you can. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Stapia. <clears throat> Uh, following up on what Com Commissioner Bernal said, I think it um, also puts us in a position as we learn to help with some of the networking uh, as we get more acquainted with some of these organizations. And I think that's one uh, important function that we can serve, uh, particularly as hopefully the community starts engaging more. And if nobody else had anything on that topic, I did just want to set a reminder since this is a public meeting that that does close on February 24th. So if there's any organizations that we feel should be applying, we have a tiny bit of time left. Um, so we can in theory help promote that um, or get folks ready for the next cycle so they could take a look at what the application looks like and get prepared for the next cycle. If we can move on to matters from the director, Dr. Kamiyama, do you have anything for us? Chair Castro, commissioners, just want to give you a um, brief 
update. Um, so the Mayor's Arts Awards nomination um, remains open and closes on um, February 18th. As of now, we have um, 16 nominations that are in and we expect a lot more towards the very end of this week. But I do encourage you all to reach out to your networks as a reminder. Um, and we will send again the Survey Monkey link um, after probably tomorrow to you all again for easy access. Um, just please note that we are still pushing it out on social media, which is our Facebook page. And already um, through the city's communication department, they have already sent it out through their weekly wrap um, emails that they, they send out. So again, we're doing what we can to get the word out and really rely um, on you to help us. Um, so there'll be some good ones on that. Um, update um, you on some, I sent this already in an email, but I did want to say again that we successfully installed two sculptures at the Municipal Recreation Sports Complex, um, otherwise fondly known as the MRC, and that is off of the 599 Passy Animal Service Shelter, and it's where the baseball fields and soccer fields are. This is a really great way that we've established a sculpture park. We will have three permanent sculptures to anchor the site, and then three temporary um, sculpture. We have three pads that are in there, and they will be a rotating um, sculpture park. There will also be programming that um, we will have scheduled quarterly, because again, I believe that you can't just install something and leave it, but we have to activate it through programming. And that site allows us access to multi-generational families, um, folks who are involved in sports um, and may not have have a big interest in arts. However, these sculptures are there now. We can use them for jumping off points. Um, again, I'm big about getting that A into STEM. So that's science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So the rabbit is, cotton tail rabbit is there. A coyote will be installed and there's a rocket. So are there different ways that we can create um, programming and lesson plans and things that will further activate that site? So we're really excited about that. Um, we just also finished conservation to a tile mural at Lafarge Library called the New Mexico Quilt. Um, and good news is that Lafarge Library was able to get staffing hired and they will be reopening to the public tomorrow. So this is very great news for the community, you know, and our librarian staff, um, they are just completely amazing and have been providing um, curb service, but now to be open in person, um, as we all know, the communities rely on libraries, not just for books, but for education and connectivity, and they become that community hub. And so we're really excited to be part of that. In addition, there have been two paintings that have been installed there. They were formerly um, at Warehouse 21. And when that building closed down, those artworks came back to the city. Um, these were artworks that were purchased way back when through the Art and Public Places program by the state. Um, but they do belong to the city, and we were able to recite two of the four, and I think we're about to schedule the other two um, paintings to be installed there. So again, great opportunity for programming, and the librarians are really innovative, but we also hope to continue um, sponsoring artists to provide workshops at the library, so that's very important for us. So again, make sure you get on down to Lafarge Library. You can see the conserved mural. It looks beautiful. Um, there's 240 handmade tiles covering anything from flora and fauna to history to astrological astronomy. Just amazing sort of vignettes within that mural. So we'll come up with the librarians um, sort of some sort of, I don't know, activity around that. So we're really pleased with that. Um, we already talked about the cultural investment funding program deadline. Um, I didn't know, Ermini, if you had anything else to add. Um, Ms. Tapia, but I think we covered everything um, in our earlier discussion. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, that's correct, Director. Thank you. All right. Um, the other thing that's upcoming in the horizon, which will be May, is um, through the American for the Arts, we are part of their sixth cohort for the Art and Economic Prosperity Study. Um, so we will be working with our cultural organizations to survey, do audience surveys. This will be part of a national survey, so our data gets inputted. Uh, we were able to do this for, oh, sorry, Kat. 
Sorry about that. I don't know what she thinks she's doing. <laughs> Getting on my head in the middle of a meeting. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. And I, you know, pets and children. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so back on track. Um, so the New Mexico um, Office of Cultural Affairs is a member of that. We were able to get a discount. We will be participating in that. And what's so wonderful about this, and it's not just arts organizations. Right, we're looking at culture in a broader sense. So um, organizations that are non-arts designated, but are still providing cultural services or cultural activities such as Kiwanis Club. They do, um, so it's over every year. That is something that we would wanna to try to get data for and audience surveys. So that study will happen in May. It's been pushed back because of the pandemic. Um, we will, as soon as they, they being AFTA, American for the Arts, hires their director for that program. We will invite them um, and hold a convening of the arts and cultural organizations and any social service nonprofit um, to help get us the word out and give a framework for that. But we're very excited about that. And the data will be able to talk about and demonstrate the importance of the creative economy, which we all know we've been impacted during the pandemic how Lodgers tax was impacted, how GRT was impacted because of the lack of cultural services and events that you can go to. So again, we're really excited to be part of that. Um, we will continue to monitor, monitor ARPA and Sarah, the federal funding for the American Recovery Act, as well as the Creative Economy Recovery um, Act as well. Um, and we're getting closer to a vote, I think, than Sarah, so fingers, crossed and we'll keep you updated on that. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about and bring to everyone's um, foreground again is some administrative procedures. So the first one is that the city and Andrea Salazar is here, so she may need to step in if I misspeak, um, but there is a city policy on both harassment and bullying. And so we just wanna remind everybody to speak with respect um, we can agree to disagree, um, but we let's do so in a civil manner. Um, and if there is an issue that anyone has, please do not hesitate to come to staff or myself, because um, sometimes we can just have a conversation and you know get on the right track again for that. So we do want to be aware of that and make and make that statement. Um, also, a reminder about violations of rolling quorum and what those look like. Um, so Andrea, I'm going to give a couple, and if they are incorrect, let me know, but I think I got them. So again, we, if, if five commissioners meet, then that requires an open meeting that has to be publicly noticed and publicly attended. That is why, for instance, um, for our committee groups, whether it's a nomination committee or the selection committee, or even the two groups that were designated for review of the ordinance, those were four commissioners or less. You must only speak about those items related to only your group. If you were then to speak to someone else from a different group about the item, you have created rolling quorum. And I know this is really confusing sometimes and hard to do because we want to have discussion. However, that's why tonight you have received the documents. We will have open and public discussion. And I've heard this emphasized again that there is a need to have this conversation in public. Um, but that is why we have the two groups. You could come up as a group with some pros and cons or what worked, what doesn't, and then you bring that as a whole to discuss tonight and moving forward. So Andrea, uh, Ms. Salazar, did I get that correct? Yes, thank you. Great, thank you. So just a reminder, and, and when in doubt, please do not hesitate to contact um, myself. All right, and um, that's all I have to report. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Vernon. Uh, Chair Castro, I have a couple of questions for Ms. Uh, um, about the report that just Pauline, that uh, Ms. Kamiyama just gave us. Uh, item number two, Pauline, uh, you mentioned the, the structure. Uh, did we get any uh, uh, photographs of the sculpture? Is there any, are there any press releases? Uh, being provided so people know about this. I haven't seen anything on the paper. So uh, that's, that's where I bring it up because, you know, uh, advertising is what makes things work. And for people to enjoy what's happening, we need to do something about it. 
So if we can get photographs, even social network, you know, just send that out what they have. I'll drive out there uh, probably the next day or two. But if we can get something professionally photographed, it'll be great. Um, you, when you mentioned the, the, the mayor's award, there's something that I wanted to speak to you that I, we have talked in passing, but the thing we need to talk about is the, the mayor's life achievement award. And we need to schedule something for that because I think it's a different category as Ms. Commissioner Holt and I have talked about this. You know, we need to uh, focus on that separately than the mayor's award because uh, I believe it's a totally separate uh, um, item. And uh, if I may say uh, publicly, uh, Commissioner Holden, if you can reach out to Mr. Mackey, since you know we've, you've talked to him about this, perhaps we can schedule to talk to the mayor or we can do something about that, get to work on that. Uh, Chair Castro and Commissioner Bernal, let me address the first um, question that you had. So the sculptures at the MRC, we have not done anything more publicly at this moment because we are waiting for the third sculpture to be installed, which will be later on, um, actually won't happen until mid-March. So in my email update to you, I did provide a um, brief description and, and photograph. Um, but there will be, I have fact sheets already created, but we're not releasing that publicly until we have the full launch and we're waiting for the third sculpture. So that's why you've not seen any press on that recently. And I should have explained that. So that's, that is my thing. But we are looking at using the, once the third sculpture is installed to then announce um, a call for artists, women sculptors, um, to be um, the first for the inaugural rotating um, sculpture exhibition. So that will happen after the third sculpture is installed. Um, regarding your suggestion about the Lifetime Achievement Award, um, we would need to think about that because that's included currently um, in the deadline for February 18th. So I would need to figure out logistically how to announce if, you know, if the mayor did want to have a separate have it um, extended just for that category or what that would entail. Um, and we would need to move pretty quickly on that. So perhaps after this meeting and maybe tomorrow I can follow up. I think you mentioned um, that you and Commissioner Holton had spoke about that so I can get on an email with both of you. Any other, any other comments? For Director Kamiyama, I did. I didn't know if you wanted to maybe report back on the new commissioners um, and the selection committee, just to let folks know where we are. Chair Castro, thank you for the reminder. Um, so we are looking at having um, candidate interviews. Um, the selection committee has narrowed it down to six candidates, um, and they will be interviewed at the end of this month. Um, and then the selection committee members will go ahead and rank. So for the, each vacancy, there will be um, a ranking of first, second, and third. Um, so that is a way to rank all six. And if we need to go back out to interview others, we will um, upon interviews and evaluation. So again, as a reminder, um, those rankings um, will be made into a recommendation memo that will then go to the city manager and mayor, um, and they will then confirm um, and then we would then go or not confirm and then we would have further discussion. Um, when the recommendations are ready for confirmation, we will go before governing body for them to approve the recommendations. And so we're hoping that that will all happen in March and still hoping to plan um, a retreat in April with the new commissioners. Um, again, that will be publicly noticed retreat and we will determine location and agenda at that time. Uh, Director, Kam Go ahead. Um, Director Kamiyama, uh, will the commissioners who are not um, on the uh, subcommittee or committee that uh, is doing the selection, will we have an opportunity to have any input into the process? Chair Castro, Commissioner Holton, that's a really great question and that we can discuss that. But currently what has happened in the past in the model that we've been using 
is that the recommendations um, are, so that's hard. We um, because we usually don't share the recommendations until they have been approved by the mayor because everything's publicly noticed. Um, so we could send out the memo to you all prior um, to submittal to the mayor. Um, and if Chair Castro and Co-Chair Wrinkle um, want ways to have further input, um, but this selection committee are the ones who are representative of the arts commissioners to make those selections and those recommendations. And again, it is recommendation. The mayor is the only one who can authorize or not, and he may choose to select other folks. That's his purview. Thank you. I, I for one, would like an opportunity, to, you know, to have some input into the process. But if that creates problems and is a departure from, you know, the practice, then you know, I can, I'm fine. Any other questions or comments? Yes, uh, Commissioner Holton, we had a, a wonderful meeting uh, with the mayor, uh, a group of us, uh, four of us met with the mayor and Mr. Mackey last week, and uh, we were able to get some guidelines in what to expect, what to look for in these in these selections. So uh, we are, I think all four of us were very confident. We had only five, and, and I believe right, and we decided to get two more, at least one more, and which we we voted on it, and we added one more to a list. So at least have three candidates for the for the two positions after the selection of the 34, 37. If am I right, Director Kamiyama? We have already 37 people applied, and we've been reducing, and now we now to we have five. We down to six. Um, so that's where we are now. So you would know that uh, that this has taken up you know the chain of command. For, for approval. Any other comments? Commissioner Biela or Commissioner Wrinkle are also on the selection committee. Commissioner Biela, go right ahead. Uh, Chair Castro, commissioners, uh, Director Kamiyama. Um, Paul, that uh, Commissioner Holton, that sounds like a great idea that you all would be able to review beforehand but there's been a process already and I'm not sure how we could work it out. So I think maybe we could put some thought, a little bit of thought into that. Cause after we've gone through and selected um, these short lists, then to send it out to the entire group might result in some somebody having an issue. You know what I mean? So I'm not quite sure how, although it does sound like a really, um, it, it perhaps should be should be thought through a little bit differently. I'm not sure, but um, we have we've already narrowed the selection. So, well, if um, <clears throat> Commissioner uh, Viela sounds like an awful lot of work has gone into this, and there's been a very large pool of candidates that's been um, reduced to probably some really pretty exceptional people, and to you know, to interject, you know, something into that process at this point, you know, I think is, is probably not a good idea. It seemed like a good idea at the time I brought it up, but uh, I, I think it's not such a good idea now. So uh, maybe, um, maybe going forward, um, there could be an opportunity yeah. for some input right. earlier into the process. But at this time, I think it's really important to get the commission, you know, up to full full to get nine of us in here as soon as possible. I think that is the overriding concern. Commissioner Wrinkle. Well, I'm, the goal is to have three candidates per each spot. And there's gonna be some ranking involved based on interviews. So we've still got a lot of work to do, mm -hmm. um, you know, and horse trading perhaps, who knows? I mean, I don't, you know, <laughs> Um, it's a little bit of a, a process, but I think we've got a good group of candidates to uh, get through it. And, and um, we've given a lot of attention. So I'm confident so far, but yes, if we can refix the, you know, sort of refine the process um, or expand the process, I'm open to that. 
Commissioner Viel. Uh, Chair Castro and commissioners, I just wanted to relate that um, mayor, um, all of a sudden I'm forgetting our mayor's name. How can I possibly forget the mayor? Anyway, the mayor, um, Weber. Weber, he had a lot of really nice things to say about the commission and about the importance of our work. And it was really nice to be able to meet with him. And hopefully as the pandemic resides, hopefully um, we'll be able to, to see him and have that, um, I think, very looked, for, you know, very looked forward to interaction with him. So I just wanted to share that. And if we don't have any more concerns, um, and I am hearing you, Commissioner Holton, I think it would be great to like revisit the process and have a discussion about how we choose commissioners, maybe not for this round, um, but we have some commissioners, unfortunately, they're going to be terming out soon, so we'll have this conversation again. Um, we can move on to matters from the public, if that's all right. Okay. I see we do have on the agenda, a presentation. And um, Chair and Commissioners, this presentation will be done by Joanne Balzer. Um, Joanne, you have the floor. And if whenever you are ready for me to put up on screen your items that you would like to present, I am ready to do so. OK, thank you. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, Chair Castro. Pauline and Armenia for giving me the opportunity to speak to you this evening, I guess, or is it tomorrow? I've been waiting. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know many of you. I know a few of you. So this is a real pleasure for me to get to see all of the arts leaders and the arts commissioners. And uh, I'm very active in the Santa Fe community with arts and culture. I sit on five boards. I'm an II trustee. I'm on the Lensic board. I'm on the IFAM board. I'm on the New Mexico Arts Commission. And um, mm, there's one other one I forgot for the moment, but I'll think of it later. And uh, I don't know if many of you know, but I was chair of the Culture Connects Committee. Uh, to create Santa Fe's cultural plan. And that was in the 2015, 2017 timeframe started by our beloved mayor, Javier Gonzalez and culminating in this report. I don't know if you've seen this report, but I must say we had six or so heavy duty recommendations and most of them were adopted and Pauline immediately embraced Culture Connects, and so did Mayor Weber. So uh, that was very gratifying because we put a lot of work in, just as you guys are doing so much work. It's great when a plan doesn't sit on the shelf and get dust. And now I have another raison d'etre, another passion, and that's Indigenous Celebrations 2022, New Mexico. I don't know if you've had a chance to read the document, I hope so, because it's really germane to everything that you're doing. And I have long been interested in elevating Native artists, uh, art and culture, and elevating it, you know, beyond a cliche or a niche um, art form, something unusual, you know, an afterthought. And I must say in today's environment that there is more recognition for indigenous art. We have indigenous curators now at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and uh, exhibitions everywhere. And a colleague of mine, Kim Martindale felt the same way that I did. And he said, you know, 2022, in New Mexico, specifically Santa Fe, but actually throughout New Mexico, is a banner year for indigenous arts and culture. And like I say in my document, 2022 is a year like no other with all of the indigenous activities that are going on. Um, centennials like Indian Market Swaya 100th, School of American Research uh, 100th, I guess the will write is 85. Um, IIA 
is 60, the museum is 50, uh, lots of openings, reopening of Here Now and Always at Mayak. Um, it, it just goes on and on. New shows, Art Indigenous at El Museo. And so we put together a project and we reached out to the arts and cultural community uh, to get their buy-in, to get them as partners. And it was absolutely amazing. It is still amazing. We have 30 arts and cultural organizations that have joined as IC22 partners. And these are, you know, the usual that you would think about SWIA and IIA and so forth, but the Georgia O'Keeffe, the Lensic, um, Axel Contemporary, are they on yet? Uh, they're, they're a partner, Indian Pueblo Cultural Center, and we have meetings and they all come. <laughs> and it's just amazing to see all the arts and cultural leaders of Santa Fe specifically um, come together in a room for a common cause. It's really wonderful. And so the mission is to elevate native artists, art and culture uh, worldwide through all the wonderful, and I wanna stress worldwide, uh, to bring attention worldwide, internationally for all the wonderful things that are happening here in 2022 and to further reband, re, excuse me, rebrand. I always think, but I'm very uh, prejudiced. I always think that Santa Fe and New Mexico is the culture indigenous hub, but to uh, announce to the world that Santa Fe and New Mexico is the place to go to learn about and to experience and to support indigenous arts and culture. And so we have a calendar. I don't know if you had a chance to look at the calendar, but we have, in addition to our 30 organizations, we have about 75 events. I am, I never wanted to do a calendar. You know, everybody says, oh, Santa Fe should have a calendar. Somebody should do it. You should do it, Joanne. No, no, no. But now I'm doing the indigenous celebrations calendar. I have to update it almost every couple of days. And we now have 75 events um, that are part of this. And uh, Armenia just put up the highlights. Um, Museum of Indian Arts and Culture, they're their new gallery is going to open, Swaya Centennial, IIA. And then do you want to just show a little bit of the calendar, Ar Armenia? Do you like our logo? I hope you like our logo. A native uh, Ben Calabasa designed that for us. So here we go. Uh, and I'm using this just for on a personal schedule. We try to Keep every month, uh, do, do some more. Uh, can you go up a little bit more? Okay, so like for example, um, well, just this past Saturday, and if you haven't seen that exhibit, Run, Don't Walk, the Abeda family exhibit at the Wilwright Museum, Tony Abeda, his father, Narciso Abeda, his two sisters, Pablita and Elizabeth, it's absolutely stunning. We are so lucky to have something like that in our community that traces the development of uh, Diné art, Navajo art from Tony's father uh, all the way down to, you know, a wonderful indigenous artist. And if you could go up to August, you can see all of the things that are happening. Okay, I don't know if everybody knows that the Gallup Ceremonial is celebrating their 100th year. I didn't know that until I started that. Mayak Hoop Dance Symposium, um, History Museum is gonna have an exhibit 100 years of Indian market, um, new shows, Art Indigenous at El Museo. It just goes on and on and it's really wonderful. So, um, 
my message to you is twofold. I want to tell you about our mission and vision. And I want to tell you how successful we've been so far in bringing the arts and culture community together. Uh, but I also want to ask you to be my eyes and ears on the ground. If there are other organizations um, or events that you know about, because there's things happening all the time, like Buffalo Thunder and you know Seeds and all of these events, um, please get them to me. You can email me directly or, you know, Pauline and Armenia have enough to do. So just email me and say, Joanne, I heard about this. They should be part of this uh, because it's a thing that really people want to be part of. And on May 11th, we're having our VIP uh, members event at the Carlos Vieira home. It's a historic house that's near CCA. I don't know if you know, know about this place. I didn't know about it till I started this, but it's a beautiful house. And Carlos Vieira was one of the first artists, uh, Hispanic artists in Santa Fe and his house exudes Santa Fe style. So we're gonna have a big uh, celebration there and we're gonna serve champagne from Gruyere that comes from the Santa Ana vineyard. So it's indigenous <laughs> champagne in a way. So we're, we're off and running and I really would love you guys to help us uh, be a success. So, oh, I have my poem. Do you want to put my poem up, uh, Armenia? I have a Valentine's Day. Anne's laughing because she's seen it already. Okay, so I sent this poem out uh, to all the members of the group. And I guess I'll send it to you because it really applies to you. Roses are red, violets are blue. There isn't a star as sparkling as you. Roses are red, violets are blue. We appreciate our arts and culture organizations and everything that you do. Roses are red, violets are blue. Indigenous artists, art and culture will be elevated worldwide in 2022. Roses are red, violets are blue. There would be no IC22 without you. IC22 loves you on Valentine's Day and every day. Okay, that's it. So thank you. I hope I kept my time to what Armenia wanted me to do. And uh, come join us, help me. And uh, thank you so much for letting me present. And I'm going to get off, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I got on too early, but I'll get off early. Okay, bye, everybody. Thank you, Joanne. Commissioner Mickey Lake. Yeah, I wish she hadn't gotten off. Um, I have a question for her and I'll direct it to um, Director Hamiata. She talked about international uh, indigenous peoples as well and their art. I would like to be in, in touch with her about the work in Brazil that indigenous peoples are doing in terms of their arts. So, Wish I could have told her that directly. Will, will uh, we get sent her email? Uh, Chairing okay. Commissioner McGill, I can send her contact information to all of you. Thank you. And it seems that she might be sending us that poem. So hopefully she'll contact us as well. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but maybe uh, Commissioner Wrinkle, I hate to put you on the spot. Um, is there anything else that we should know, I guess, about the group? Oh, about this, about the IC22 yeah, project? Well, um, it's a effort to combine all of the activities and to encourage organizations to, you know, lean in to each other to figure out what everybody's doing at the same time. I just wrote a note to say it's great for our calendaring purposes so that we're planning events, <laughs> we'll know more about what's happening. Right, and it's already done for us a little bit, um, but I think if there are arts organizations, um, you know, I'm guessing I have to go back and look. Um, 
that a lot of the organizations are more visual arts based, but there could be a way for the performing arts to um, join in as well if they have, um, it's just a thought, I, it just occurred to me, but, um, but it's a you know, citywide effort and actually state, you know, I think statewide or region-wide effort to um, put, put um, everyone together and they were gonna reach out for marketing dollars for a national sponsor. Um, so that remains to be seen, but you know, the more the merrier makes it easier to promote um, you know, the efforts with, with a rising tide, so. Thank you. And Commissioner Viella, did you put your hand down? I did, Chair Castro, thank you. Yeah, I was, and commissioners, I was just going to, um, Anne actually mentioned it, just talk about that they are, it looks like a big part of this right now is that they're looking for sponsorships. Mm -hmm. Commissioner McElect, did you have another question? Okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead and move on. That was an awesome presentation and hopefully we'll learn more about IC22. It sounds like an awesome program. And if we're gonna be the epitome of indigenous art, that's something that is good to know. Um, we'll move on to discussion items. So we do have the discussion of the ordinance. Um, does anybody wanna take the lead? Commissioner Holton? Um, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I have, we've been talking about this um, since I think the very first meeting that I attended. Um, I've looked at it more and more carefully. Um, and I think it's, um, I think the policy behind it, I think the process behind it, I think the substantive effect of it uh, is not good for the Arts Commission and it's not good for the city of Santa Fe. Uh, I'm opposed to it. I think the, um, the powers that are uh, removed from the Arts Commission to approve grants, to have input into a budget, um, to utilize the services of the executive director and staff, um, to essentially take away the <clears throat> authority of the Arts Commission to promulgate or establish its own policies and procedures, to uh, take away virtually all of its um, authority and policy and procedure making regarding arts and public process to remove its ability to receive donations and to approve how donations are to be made. Um, uh, authority regarding location of uh, art funded under arts in public places, um, splitting the, the duties of the Arts Commission, which formerly was to uh, make recommendations to the governing body now is to make recommendations to both the city manager and the governing body, which creates potentially uh, a conflict. Um, and all of that taken together uh, turns the Arts Commission into essentially rubber stamping um, things that are done. Um, by the department. Um, I think this is not was con contemplated. It wasn't isn't what was called for when the department was created. If you look at the ordinance that created the department, um, the Arts Commission is mentioned twice and the department is to act as a liaison with the Arts Commission and is to coordinate with the Arts Commission. And none of that suggests that all of this um, authority really checks and balances of the Arts Commission vis-a-vis -vis the, the mayor's office and the, the city, uh, the city councilor governing body. Um, uh, that uh, none of that was uh, even suggested when the department was established. Um, Unfortunately, we haven't had a chance to have any consultation with either the department or the city attorney's office on this. This was really 
dropped on us at the first meeting that I attended. And it's only in, <clears throat> you know, recently that we've, this thing has been reformulated. Um, there's been no input uh, sought from members of the commission and there's um, been none received. We haven't been advised by council um, regarding this. Uh, there are real questions in my mind. I don't see anything in the uh, municipal code that says any of these things need to be made part of a resolution, any of the policies and procedures. And if you do that, then if the Arts Commission decides that it wants to change or thinks it's advisable to change policies and procedures, and then it has to go back to the, the city council or the governing body. And my understanding is, is that an ordinance goes through uh, a committee process and committee review and that a resolution doesn't. So you've got this odd combination of a resolution and an ordinance that is being essentially voted into law. And all of this is, is happening, you know, um, I think very abruptly and it's uh, taken an awful lot of time uh, from this body and I think has been a distraction. It's been a distraction for me, um, I know. So that's an awful lot of information, um, but those are my thoughts. So I, I would be in favor of, um, you know, not going forward with us. Commissioner Biel. Um, uh, Chair Castro, Director Kamiyama, Commissioners. Um, we have been told, I know by Director Kamiyama that uh, the reason it was the recent establishment of arts and culture department really necessitated these changes. Um, but I also, you know, it's, these legal documents are really um, difficult to read and difficult to, and there's a lot going on here and I'm not sure we've ever really had the time that we need to, um, to, to, to review these changes properly and understand some of the ramifications. Um, I know Commissioner Bernal, you were gonna say something, so I'll hand it over to you. Well, no, what I was gonna say is, in light of everything that uh, Commissioner Halton has said and, and that we've discussed, I think uh, this is something that we should just, I'm not, I'm not, I don't wanna say cancel, but postpone and perhaps address this whole thing at a retreat. We talked about the retreat is coming up in March and May, whenever we're gonna do it. Uh, I mean, if we waited six months of this, let's just table the whole thing. And I propose to be, I, I wasn't ready to make a motion or somebody else wants to do it or wants to come and, I'm like, and what I'm saying is, but just if we're looking for one retreat, maybe we should do two or whatever we need to address something that this, the, 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 the amount of information that, that, has, that we're talking about has, it it's impacts a lot of pieces of this. Uh, like Commissioner Holton has mentioned. So I'm in favor of tabling the whole thing and waiting to the retreat to address it when we have nine commissioners on board and perhaps someone, some of the new people can bring you know, new information, new light into it. So I do see everyone's hand. I just wanna be clear that this is a discussion item. There actually isn't any action we're supposed to be taking on this. Um, once again, this is like the fourth or fifth meeting where this is just a discussion item. We have the assistant city attorney on the call specifically for our questions. Um, so if we have some really pressing questions, I would suggest we make ask them now. Um, Commissioner Wrinkle. Well, in joining um, some of the comments we've heard tonight, um, I, I, um, well, the proposed changes to the ordinance and the content of the resolution and the accompanying policies and procedures for the art and public places are complex and complicated and have serious legal and jurisdictional implications and consequences. I, and I think other arts commissioners would like to understand why these specific changes have been brought forward and what problems they're intended to solve. To best understand the purpose and the whys of the new ordinance's components, I think it'll take a lot of time and careful thought, consideration, and discussion. We obviously have numerous projects on our plates, including the recruiting and interviewing of new commissioners, the Mayor's Arts Award, to the with the event planning, producing commemorative publications, completing the nomination process, as well as the upcoming grant review panels that will need to be organized to convene 
soon to analyze the next round of traditional marketing grants and collaborative grants, which are due later this month. I think there's been a general consensus to start over from scratch to ensure that the intention and direction of this document is in keeping with the general philosophy of checks and balances that the Arts Commission provides, the Department of Art and Culture, and to work in tandem with each other. So I'm of a, I have lots of specific questions, but I don't know that that's the way to go to ask the assistant city attorney at this point. Um, I think that it would be better, we would be better served to um, wait until we have all nine commissioners um, and to uh, address it at a time when we can devote concentrated energy on the topics at hand, perhaps at a retreat, as you mentioned, or a second retreat if that feels necessary, um, or a series of workshops or subcommittees. Um, thank you. Commissioner Mikulak. Yes, thank you, um, Chair Castro. Uh, I would have lots of questions for the city attorney. Um, and I would like to have a meeting with the Senate city attorney or some other attorney provided by the city that can highlight specifics in terms of how the proposed um, document is going to actually affect the Arts Commission. So I would be very happy if we could have a second retreat or a meeting that focuses specifically on these issues as brought up by Commissioner Holton and have them answered one by one by the uh, city attorney's office rather than a commissioner who is happens to be a lawyer. I think it would be very important to have the city attorney address these issues. Thank you. Commissioner Viel. Uh, Chair Castro, thank you, Director Kabayama and commissioners. Um, is it possible to make this an action item for next month's meeting? I mean, it's not possible to make it an a, a action item? Elizabeth Nottinger, it is. Oh, yes, you can. You just can't take any action at this meeting. Tonight, so we can. For the next it's, meeting, it's, we can. It's up, to the, it's up to Pauline and all of you, you know, to determine the, the agenda, so. And so what needs to happen to, to get that, to get that, this item as an action item on next month's agenda? We Chair just Castro. propose that we just, oh, go ahead, director. Yeah, Chair Castro, Commissioner Biella, we will just make note of it, um, but determine what it is that you want as an action item. Um, we, okay. just to reiterate, per your request as an overall commission, we provided the documents um, with the red line at least for the ordinance amendment. The purpose of tonight's meeting was a series, that's why it's not an action item, but this was an opportunity for you to have reviewed, worked in your small groups and come up with questions. And this will be an ongoing process. Um, Assistant City Attorney Salazar is here to answer any questions, but if you would like to postpone dialogue for another time, that can happen as well. Again, this is just for discussion and we leave this opportunity um, for this meeting, um, per your request, that's what we have done. Um, but we will. And director, I, oh. sorry to interrupt, um, Chair Castro. So I, I understand the idea, the desire to have a retreat. A retreat is going to be exactly this type of conversation, a public conversation that's noticed, that's on a date and time that will be televised in the same manner. So it's not going to be anything different. Um, so that's why you know we we positioned it to be fully on the agenda to answer any questions that you had. Um, I don't know how it will change. I don't know if the vision is that you'll be meeting in person. I do want to reiterate that our city manager currently is not having. He's asking us to not have any meetings in person. I do not know when that will change. But if that's the desire, then we will have to wait that out. Sorry. No, you're totally fine. Thank you uh, for that clarification. Um, and I just, I do see both of your hands up, Commissioner Mikulak and Viela. Um, one of the things I was going to suggest is to ask for a special meeting since we have our monthly meeting scheduled. And that way we can get on the YouTube channel and get at least the ball rolling on that. Uh, Commissioner Viela. 
Um, Chair Castro, uh, Director Kamiyama and Commissioners, Assistant Attorney Salazar. Um, the issue of about talking about all of these changes in an Arts Commission meeting on a Monday night seems just not doable. It just does not seem realistic. There are so many questions that I have about why these changes are happening now. It's like, what, what are these changes? What are the problems that these changes are meant to solve? What is the goal? Where are the checks and balances? And we will have to go line by line by line over this really dense legal document. So I just feel like it's not very realistic to ask us to do this work in a Monday night Arts Commission meeting when we also have a lot of other really important business at hand, like the mayor's awards, like the um, filling the vacancies, like the marketing grants. Um, so that those are my feelings. I just don't think it's realistic. And that's why I, for one, would like to be able to either break out in small groups to try to determine um, what these changes, what ramifications these changes are going to have, or dedicate a meeting where we will have much more time. Thank you. Commissioner Mc Yes, Commissioner uh, Viela, is that it? Is that it? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Viela? Okay, I agree with what uh, Commissioner Viela has said. I also think that if we, I mean, since we were uh, charged with having our questions, perhaps Paul could raise some questions and speak directly to the city attorney to get an answer tonight to some of your questions. I realize, I agree with you, uh, Commissioner Viella, that this is not the appropriate venue for us to do it. Small groups make it very difficult to have a consensus discussion. So um, if this is the only way to do it, then maybe we should do that. Uh, 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 Director uh, Kamiyama and fellow commissioners, uh, it seems to me that maybe the best way to, to go forward with this would be to have a, a, a smaller group that I would be a part of that would have a meeting, uh, you know, with the department and with the city attorney. And in advance of that meeting, uh, we could formulate specific written questions, get, you know, written responses to them, and then we could have a discussion about them. Because to have a freewheeling discussion about something that's this complex, and particularly when you have the ordinance and a resolution, and you've got issues of copyright law, and you've got issues related to uh, accessioning and deaccessioning, and you've got inconsistencies between the ordinance and the resolution. Uh, well, it really I hate, to, I hate to interrupt, I'm so sorry, go ahead. Well, I, I was just saying that because of all of those things, uh, Chairman Castro, I think to constitute a smaller group, working group that could, you know, engage more in a more detailed way on some of these things and then come back to the fuller group with a better definition of the issues and the questions might be more productive. That was my suggestion. Okay, I just feel like we tried to break out into smaller groups uh, for that specific reason before this meeting, and it didn't seem to work out the way we wanted. Um, so that's why my next suggestion was to have a special meeting specifically on this issue, and that way we can all be on the line, we can have all our issues addressed, we have some more time to write things down. Since you did send us, Commissioner Holton, a list of your concerns, it'd be really great if you could ask those directly to um, to attorney Salazar and at least get the ball rolling and started so that we have a sense of what your concerns are. And I know you already did lay some of those out. I don't know, maybe if uh, assistant attorney Salazar, did you have any response? Chair Commissioner Holton, I haven't seen a list of comments. I, I might be missing something, but I did not receive a, an email. No worries. Let me go ahead and forward some of those to you. In the meantime, uh, Commissioner Holton, did you want to ask some of those questions? Uh, no, uh, other than to say that because of all of the uh, the questions with the ordinance, I didn't, I mean, I have looked carefully at the uh, proposed resolution, but I haven't gone into any detailed analysis of that, but I can. 
and I can put that in writing and I can send both of those to the city attorney's office. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, um, and that way, you know, we have the beginning of a working group. Chair Castro, Commissioner Halton, as a point of order, please um, funnel your communications to Ms. Tapia, and then she will share that forward with um, Assistant City Attorney Salazar. I appreciate that, thank you, apologize. Hey, thank you. And mm -hmm. Chair Castro, um, this is Go Rod. Um, I wanted to say uh, just- Excuse me, excuse me, Madam Chair. I'm just going to say as a point of order that you should be calling on people. They should not be calling out to you. So you have other people with their hands up to nothing, you know, no reason Mr. Lambert can't speak, but you need to call out to them so we don't have people talking over each other and speaking when somebody else is speaking. It's almost impossible to do minutes when you have that. So please uh, follow that guideline. I apologize. And go, go ahead and finish your thought, Mr. Lambert. And then we do have Commissioner Wrinkle right after you. No, I'm sorry. It's just I didn't have my video on, so I wasn't sure if you could see my hand. Sorry. Um, I just, as a point of order, I think there seems to be some kind of confusion regarding the semantics of the original ordinance. When the original ordinance was created, the Arts Commission was staff. In fact, the staff was the Arts Commission until 2019. So all of the rights and privileges of the Arts Commission that are designated in that original ordinance refer to staff specifically. So just as a semantic point of order, it's important that you understand that in 2019, when we became a department, that Arts Commission title refers to us in that same way that it did in the original ordinance. So if you could please view the ordinances from that perspective and with that semantic concern in mind, I think everything will make sense. Commissioner Wrinkle. Well, I have a question, Assistant City Attorney Salazar and Director Kamayama. Why, it seems that the effect of these changes is to change the Arts Commission from an independency independent policy and decision-making body into a rubber stamp for the department. Why is that? So Chair, um, Commissioner Wrinkle, I, I don't quite understand that statement because you don't actually create policy for the city. So that is, I, I uh, even reading the previous ordinance, you're not a, a decision-making body in the sense that you create policies that govern the city as a whole or the governing body. You are a commission that is utilized um, to move some things forward, but you can't create something that, that is outward facing, meaning controlling the city in general. So ordinances control the city and, and the entire city must follow them. Policies are internal procedures that dictate how we how we move forward. So I think that's a, that's a little bit of a confusion for me in, in that question. Um, secondarily, you know, all of our, we have a number of committees and most of our committees do do work very similar to you where we bring topics up and we have discussions, um, but they don't create overarching um, rules and regulations. So as you've seen on the top of this document, this is sponsored by Commissioner Villarreal, meaning it is her document, her ordinance, her resolution. Both documents go through the process of committees and governing body approval in order to make it an ordinance and a resolution of the city of Santa Fe. So I think, I, I guess maybe based on that, um, if you could maybe ask me your question again so I can understand it a little more. Well, uh, forgive me for not understanding the, you know, definitional terms uh, for the legal, I'm not a lawyer, but when I first read this original propo proposal um, at the very beginning, when I first, you know, became an arts commissioner, I, um, said, oh my gosh, this looks great. We're not gonna have to do any work. We're just gonna have to sit back and eat bonbons. It just seems like everything, all of our responsibilities are 
removed, taken away. We don't have to, why, why, are, we, why are we gonna be a arts commissioner anymore? So I, well, think, I, like that, I think that you might um, have some agreement from other arts commissioners. I'm not sure that they feel similar to that. And um, we are an advisory body. I understand that. But the whole process is intended to work with all the committee. We're not the only commission in town. There are many different commissioners, uh, commissions. They may work similarly or, or differently. I don't know. I'm not intimately familiar with them. But, um, uh, you know, I think that there's a checks and balances process that happens, but the ordinance needs to be um, carefully checked to be legal. And certain things in this are not legal. And it's, it could be very um, risky to bring up an ordinance without a little more thought and care put into it. That's all. Well, and as you mentioned, Commissioner Wrinkle, give me, sorry, I'm so sorry. I think the intent, um, Assistant uh, Attorney Salazar, did you have a response? Sorry, Chair, I, I just wanted to understand what is illegal in this ordinance. I, I... Well, and I was gonna, sorry, address that Commissioner Wrinkle did just state that she wasn't an attorney. So I'm assuming she doesn't know if it's legal or not. She has some questions on whether it is or not, but that's why you're here. And so we have those questions. Um, I did forward them to Edmenia. So hopefully we can get those to you as soon as possible. Um, but my understanding of the intent of some of this at least, because I have been through some of the conversations before, is one, that we need more community input, that there's not enough community input in the art that is going in the communities. And that is one of the main goals of some of these ordinances is to make sure that people who are living around this art have input into the art that is going in their community. And two, I think it's really important that we realize that we are bureaucrats. We are not anybody special. Yes, we have some expertise, but we are not the only experts in art. And so we want more input from other folks in some of this decision-making process. I think for me, that was my understanding of what some of the goals of these ordinances are. Commissioner Biel. I didn't understand that. I didn't understand those things at all, Chair Castro and Director Kamiyama and commissioners. That, that that's never been my understanding of these um, changes. But the problem is, is that there's so there's so many of them that it's really really difficult in this meeting to have a discussion about each and every one of them. If that's really what is going to happen, we could potentially do that. But if Rod, uh, Assistant Director Lambert said that the commission, the department is now the commission. If that's true, why do we still have, why are there still arts commissioners? That can't be so. One did not replace the other. They worked together, the former arts commission, directors of the arts commission and assistant director and the people employed by the city, those folks worked with the arts commission in a certain way. And those things seem to be um, the way that we worked together seems to be there's some desire to alter those ways that we're working together in significant ways. And so that's really, I don't understand the reasons why these um, changes are being made and I would like to. Um, and I just don't see it happening in these meetings. Agreed. And I think, you know, what I'm hearing is that we probably are going to need a special meeting. Um, but we did recently have on another subject, a meeting with the mayor and we asked him directly, what is this arts commission about? And he said that that's shifting. So I think that gives us a lot of room to kind of decide what relationship we have and to really put cement into law, like we are talking about into policy, what we feel is important for our, our, our arts and culture in Santa Fe. Sorry, I'm getting very excited. Um, and, and that's like, to me, such a great opportunity and such an amazing opportunity for us to really take this bull by the horns and say, this is what we want our arts and culture department in to be, and this is what we want the Arts Commission to be. And yes, it's gonna take more than a small line item on an agenda. I think we need another meeting. Commissioner Mikulak. You know, a lot of the, this, this sort of um, discussion to me feels, thank you, um, uh, Chair Castro. It, it feels very abstract and, and, and not concrete. And what I would like to have is a concrete question that we can ask the, the city attorney's office right now. It seems like there's issues of power. Who's gonna have the power to do A and who's gonna have the power to do B? And it looks like the Arts Commission is the one that's gonna lose all power according to 
the discussion so far. So I would like one question that's concrete that would show how making these changes is going to disempower the Arts Commission. Thank you. Director Cumming. Chair Castro, commissioners, I did want to just share that it's not a perception of taking away power, but this defining roles and responsibilities between the arts and culture department and the arts commission. And I'm very thankful that many of you have already served on panels or will be serving on panels. So that is your involvement. Um, we're not as a department making random choices. There is panels that are conducted. We are as inclusive and moving away from that to be more community centered. Um, again, under the Culture Connects umbrella. So the commissioners as the advisory body, we will bring the rankings and for the grants, for example, the cultural investment funding program to you as a body based on the panels that um, have evaluated the applications. Um, so that is one example of my gratitude for your service and your voices, um, but also knowing that I am as director doing what I can to really get community voices and input. You represent a certain network and a certain part of the city. And my job is to make sure as a department that we are serving and hearing as many voices as possible. Um, so we look forward to working further with you. Um, we'll figure that out if that is a special meeting or not, um, or what format that takes. We were hoping that tonight's discussion would be one of many. Um, but I do hear from example from Commissioner Villela that an evening meeting um, on a Monday night right now may just not be the right thing. So we will have to figure out calendaring with you all um, and what that might look like. But as what's been recommended is that there would be um, specific questions and or strategies and we will confer with Assistant City Attorney Salazar. Again, the city attorney's office will have final say as well as Councillor Villarreal. Um, so everything will be have to um, fit to legal formality um, and that's the city attorney's office once they get the draft so that they will then do a final draft. Um, so we will continue conversation with you all. And I just wanted to state that. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Director Kamiyama. One question that I have. Sorry, Commissioner is, Holton, I actually called on Commissioner Morris. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Castro. Um, I'm So I'm just kind of trying to figure out if we're disagreeing on anything, right? I, I, it, I don't think that anyone wants to take away power from community members. I'm not hearing that. So like, I, I'm hearing that you're saying this is what we're trying to do. Right, but I'm not hearing that we don't want to do this from any, anyone. It seems like there's just the language about what this is is the is the problem here, right? Um, and I would really love to know if there is a disagreement because I don't know that there is yet. It just sounds like there's some there's some legalese and some language that just needs to be sorted through. So, um, yeah, I, that, that's just where I am with, with all of this. I'm, I'm wondering what if there actually is an issue or if we do just kind of need to all sit in a room for nine hours and go through this thing line by line so that we can say, is that, is that what that means? No, that's not what that means. This doesn't mean that, that the, the Arts Commission wasn't that. And we can say, oh, okay, can we write that differently? Yes. And it seems like that may be the problem because I don't hear what the actual issue is, which is also... Kind of a bummer that's going to take a long time but also kind of exciting because i don't know if there is an issue here yeah i agree i'm kind of hearing the same thing and that's why like i don't want to waste any more of your time assistant attorney salazar if we're not going to have these discussions if we're going to just put it all in one bucket and then we can get it done that seems the best strategy for me um but we'll figure it out as director kamiyama said commissioner holton well, I guess the first question that I have is, 
you know, why were we not engaged in this conversation earlier? I'm, I'm happy to engage now. I'm glad we're at a point where we're talking about engaging, but I'm, uh, I don't understand. And I think this is what um, Commissioner Wrinkle and uh, well, my understanding is you've been engaged in this conversation since you got on the commission. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't get that. My understanding is you've been engaged in this conversation about the ordinance since you got on the commission. Is that correct, Commissioner Holton? That is correct, but in terms of putting the the ordinance and the resolution together, that was simply presented and it's been months trying to get it in a format where it, it could be discussed. But I think we're all in agreement now that we should, now that we have it and we're having this conversation that we need to have a more specific, concrete, less abstract discussion. And I'm very much in favor of that. Wonderful. So I don't need, think we need to dwell or talk to staff about what they have done or haven't done. I think that we need to move forward and start working on what we have. That's fine with me. I welcome that. Any other discussion on this agenda item, folks? No hands, Commissioner. Um, Commissioner you Morris, have, I think your hand is still up. And you have Via Viela. I'm sorry. Attorney no, Sell. Commissioner Viela, go right ahead. Uh, Chair Castro, thank you, uh, Director Kamiyama and Commissioners. Uh, my feeling is that this was put to, to us, given to us, all of these legal documents without any discussions and engagement before we were given this about what the goals, what the goals are here. And that's how I certainly feel um, not, I don't understand, I don't understand a lot of this, and I would really like to. So that's, that's and my And I think people are putting their best foot forward and are doing their best to give us all the tools that we have at our disposal to answer those questions, and we will continue to do so. Uh, okay. Assistant, <laughs> Attorney Salazar, or sorry, Commissioner Viela. You want to respond? So, well, that I mean, that's great. We are allowed to have our own opinions here, and so yes, we are putting our best feet forward, and we're going to do, you know, we're going to get come together and have further discussions. But I just feel like everybody gets to have their own. They have their own experience and their own opinion. And for for me, I feel that we have been we haven't been told we haven't been told why these things need to happen in a way that I can understand. So thank you. And you have, of course, and I'm glad you have the opportunity to express that. Thank you. Assistant Attorney Sal. Thank you, Chair. I, I think I'd like to ask maybe a global question because I, I, let's see, we have met with you in small groups. We've met with you in groups of three. Um, we then have met with you in public meetings such as this. Then you've met individually as small groups. And I need to understand what it is you need because a couple of months ago, we went line by line in the ordinance and some of you gave me feedback and that was proposed and changed in here in this document. And so I, I'm kind of at a, a crossroads to understand what it is I can do to help facilitate understanding this document. I'm happy to do it here. I am happy to go line by line here. I'm happy to meet with you individually, but I also don't want to waste any of your valuable time by continuing to meet in these large groups and not getting to the heart of what your questions are. So if you could you know, get explain a proposal that would help facilitate understanding this document, the difference is I do wanna outline that when you look at the ordinance, the things that are, you know, underlined are additions, the things that are uh, stricken through are the removals. And when it comes to the duties and powers, there isn't really that much that has changed. Um, I think it's important to note that the Arts Commission never brings the budget to the Finance Committee and presents that budget. That has always been staff. So when it says in here, at least the very last one that was crossed out, the commission shall formulate, submit, 
annually a budget request and proposal for utilization of its funds. That is always staff who does that. That is why we cemented the language at the end that regarding any programmatic um, budgeting appointments and grants, that that's all done in consultation with you. So I, I, I just wanna, I wanna be as helpful as possible. And I don't think that, that maybe I have been or that we've been utilizing our time well. So I'd like some guidance on how to move forward with that. Commissioner Mikula. Thank you, Chair Castro. I think that um, Commissioner Viela has said it really clearly that what happened for me is to get, I, and I can see how this could happen. There's a, there, you know, the, we've, we all know about COVID. We know that we're in a, a struggle trying to figure out how we're going to move through COVID, blah, blah, blah. We've got a new arts and culture department. And so there's, there are changes that need to be made, but we didn't get to talk about what those changes, we don't even know why the document exists. So then there's, uh, a, a, unless defined and clearly explained, the options for misperception and miscommunication or those people who have more knowledge in one area than another, things, misinformation begins to happen. I think fundamentally that there might be a question about what the arts actually mean. And uh, there's a fundamental division between some of us perhaps as to what is quote art. And like when I was speaking to the Desert Corral, they are trained musicians with decades of training and they are professional. Is that high art as opposed to a street artist? And so if we don't have any kind of representation about are we inclusive and what does that mean to be inclusive and how do you be begin to become inclusive, then there's going to be all of these issues about power. And what I understood the Arts Commission to be and why I agreed to serve on it was that we're moving away from this universal Western colonial notion of what art is. And we're going to let we're going to be here to facilitate what the art, what artists exist in our community. And who's gonna define those artists? The people who are artists. And so here's the power situation. Who's gonna to get to choose? And I think the document leaves us in the dark about, especially since the discourse began about how this is disenfranchising the Arts Commission. I honestly don't see how it's disenfranchising the Arts Commission, but I'm not a lawyer. And I would like a lawyer who knows, who can work with this document. And if we have to go line by line, as uh, Rashawn said, and say, does this mean this? But it needs to be somewhat independent from our group because right now I'm confused and I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated. And I would like the district attorney, you know, Andrea Salazar's in, in the district attorney's office to address some of these. I still haven't heard a concrete question. What, what, what's the problem? Mr. Holton, Commissioner Holton, can you give one question that you can get a, an answer to? You're muted, Commissioner Holton. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Mikulak, um, two questions, specific questions. One is why are we doing this? Two is why is subparagraph E of the arts and public places uh, section of the existing ordinance deleted uh, in its entirety. Um, and I guess three is why are the, um, we are an advisory body, but under the existing uh, ordinance, the, um, 
the authority to make recommendations to the governing body is in the Arts Commission. And in many respects in the proposed ordinance, why is that transferred to the department? And I guess number four, um, uh, the Arts Commission currently has the authority to make its own rules and procedures about how things are done. Um, and that's in, um, that remains in the ordinance, but the proposed resolution uh, in detail transfers all of that to the department. So why are all these changes made? But the very first why is, um, you know, what is, where is this coming from and why do we need to make all these changes? So I'd like to give my perception of what's happening. And then if I could lean on Director Kamiyama and maybe Assistant Attorney Salazar. But my understanding of why this is happening is that there's not very clear directive on what the duties of the Arts and Culture Department versus the duties of the Arts Commission are. And we want to put it in writing and make it a lot more solid, give it some more teeth so that we know what our responsibilities are and what they should be doing and what our relationship is. Is that Chair correct, Director Kamiyama, uh, Assistant Attorney Salazar? Chair Castro, Commissioners, yes. And I would even go a little bit backwards in time um, to explain that the Art in Public Places was put in place prior to an Arts Commission existing. And so these changes should have been established earlier on. And now that we have become a department, it is again, I will say, to delineate roles and responsibilities and to establish clearly that the Art in Public Places is a program um, and not a body. And additionally, that by codifying procedures, they become something that we can, that is even more so transparent is which we're all interested in stating and have things out publicly. So it's, that is the intention of this. Um, and you know we have been working on this for probably a year. And so we will figure out a better way to communicate um, the background and so that everyone feels like they're up to speed. So that's on that. And Assistant City Attorney Salazar, did you have anything to add? Um, Chair Commissioner Holton, I think it's important one to look at while we're talking to have the ordinance up because um, it doesn't actually remove any ability to adopt administrative rules procedures necessary to accomplish its purpose. It's still in there. Um, but why is this necessary? I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why it's necessary. One, it's very important to establish the community gallery. I, I know that's not in contention here, and we haven't really talked about that section. That's the last section, but the Arts Commission and the Arts and Culture um, Department really wants to solidify that that community gallery remains in the convention center area and that that community gallery has its purpose memorialized in a document so that it always remains there. That's one reason. The other reason is that when you do, when we did have the establishment of the Arts and Culture Department and the Arts Commission, it's important to basically delineate what's internal staff and what is our commission's duties. Many of these duties haven't changed. The Arts Commission still has a role in, in everything that it's performing. But the change that you have mentioned about removing the art in public places paragraph is for a simple reason. It is because the idea of having arts in public places out in the community is at least in terms of best practices of what I've read in Culture Connects and learned from being part of this, is that incorporating members of the community and not just having arts commissioners or a select committee establish what art goes into the committee is important to have public buy-in. And so I think that that's what this document is attempting to reflect, is that you want more people from the community 
working together to place art that is in city property in city property. And so those are those are some of the fundamental reasons for that this establishment of the document. The next thing about the art and public places policies and procedures. I think it's important to understand that right now we don't have any formal policies and procedures. So when incidents happen in our city where there might be deaccessioning de or there's questions about what happens next, there isn't any true guidance. And that's why we're requesting that guidance be memorialized and reviewed by the people in the Arts Commission who understand art. And so that is why we've taken this through your process is, hey, is this the right way to move forward with public policies and procedures? Is this the right process to do that? And so that is where your guidance and purview is very much necessary. And I think that maybe it is hard to get through these documents, but that's the attempt here is to ensure that our arts commissioners are giving us the best practices and helping to make sure the best practices are going to be memorialized by our city. So I think those are the fundamental parameters that we've been looking at over the course of, and I will say it's longer than a year. I received this document, I think from Arts and Public Places in January of 2021 maybe. Thank you, and we really appreciate that time. Um, Commissioner McEwen. I meant to take my hand down. I, I'm I'm very I'm grateful for at least getting something concrete. I mean, it's like we're talking, uh, you know, in these big circles. And as Commissioner Viela had said, if we had maybe been uh, provided with this document with a discussion or a description of why we're getting it and what we need help for and from, and th that would have been helpful. Um, but thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Um, how do I address uh, Andrea? As, Attorney, as a, Salazar. As a, as a, Attorney Salazar. Attorney Salazar, thank you very much. Assistant Director Lambert. Yes, Chair Castro, members of the commission. I think it's also important to note that this, the Arts and Culture Department, previously known as the Arts Commission staff, we've been operating for however many years with our own internal policies. We know how to manage an art on loan program that was developed by the people who worked here before and it improves every year or it changes or it tweaks and now we've got it down to a best practice. The grant program, the way the grant program operates is a completely internal process that we have set up so that we involve panels and discussions and the applications and all the contents of the applications, all of those were internally developed by the admin, by the admin staff, us over the years until it's a perfected model of what's going on. The gallery, the gallery model has been in operation for almost 11 years now. And I have developed the internal policies and procedures for how the gallery operates. That is our job as staff to manage these programs and how they interface with the public. The, the resolution factor of this whole process is to formalize all of those internal policies and best practices that we have been developing for 20 years now into a formalized document so that the ancestors that take mine and Pauline's and Arminia's job in 10 or 20 years will have a plan for how they can manage things and what the best practices are as established by us. So all of the resolution part is meant to address internal policies of how we operate and how we function so that those policies are transparent to the community. <laughs> so if they come to us with a question, we have an answer that is written down, that is validated, that is vetted, and that is proven in a resolution that we can show them that's on the website. This is how things are done. Otherwise, there's a perception of it being arbitrary. There's a question of it, the optics of it being biased. There's a question of things not having a, an official process. So all of the resolution part is us taking all of these decades of experience and internal policies of how we do things. All of you have had jobs where this is how we manage the fax machine. This is how we manage requests from, from customers. This is how we manage the delivery of an object over a certain period of time. 
this is how a contract works. All of those things in the resolution are meant to address and codify all of those internal processes, which we have not codified in over 20 years. So we have been working as a staff on internal policies and we can continue to do so because it's been obviously working, but this, this is a way for us to be able to codify so that it's transparent to the public, transparent to you, all of the resolutions and the way we do things. So that's that part of it. And then the ordinance part is to deal with the separation of power so that the Arts Commission, it was always Arts Commission staff or Arts Commission Committee, Arts Commission staff, Arts Commission Committee, but they were all internalized processes that were divided up arbitrarily as a way to function. So it's important to note that the Arts Commission is the necessary body to help us do our jobs, but mostly to supervise the expenditure of money that we receive from public funding. And so the necessity of a commission to serve is to serve as advisors so that when we are making decisions regarding the way we spend and distribute money for our grants or for public art purchases or for sponsorships or anything else in a certain range, that is, we, we have you to help consult so that it's transparent to the public like all of our other resolutions and policies. So it's important to note all of that in the formation of this document. Commissioner Villa. Oh, thank you, Chair Castro uh, and commissioners, Director Kamiyama, Assistant Director Lambert. Um, well, it's interesting, Assistant Director Lambert, that you, you know, um, what, what you're, how you're talking about this right now, because what I'm finding to be really confusing is the reference to the Arts Commission in the previous documents oftentimes means both the commission and the department. And that's where so much confusion lies that we're going to really have to get down in the weeds here and see, okay, what is it that you're asking the commissioners to do? And what is it that the, the department does? And all of those things are going to have a reason. But right now, it just seems like so many of these things, it's the mention of the Arts Commission now goes, these duties now go to the Arts and Culture Department. Well, we need to be able to parse down a little bit more who is being referred to, the department or the commissioners. And so I think that that's critical to us being able to, to come to terms with this and to resolve a lot of these things. And um, thanks. Yeah. Chair Castro, mm -hmm. Commissioner yeah, Villa, yeah, I agree completely. That? It is semantic and that's the problem and that's why we're doing this. And it's been a problem from the beginning that Arts Commission, when this ordinance was originally written, when the funding source was created to create money from tourism for all of our operations and programming, they didn't know what we were going to be. They didn't know what we were going to do. They didn't have any assignment for what programs were except for art in public places as a program. Everything else we've developed, we poet laureate, city historian, the community gallery, the grants program, all of these items have come up since then. And so it's important for us to update the record and include all of these programs that are fundamental to the function of arts and culture in our community and formalize them and codify them and spell them out clearly and not have this vagueness anymore. We've always, all the rules are the same. It's just, we're putting names on what has been done historically and how it's gonna be done. Commissioner Wrinkle. Thank you, <clears throat> Chair Castro. Um, thank you, Assistant Director Lambert. Um, always helpful to hear from you. However, I, I query whether it's helpful or advisable spell out absolutely everything in the form of a resolution that gets approved by the governing body. What if you mentioned, you know, this is how you work the fax machine. Well, what God forbid would happen if you got a new fax machine and you had to have different rules about how you operate the fax machine. So the wiggle room and the flexibility and the, the um, sort of nimbleness of the department if forced to, you know, I think you ought to be careful about what you put into these, these or uh, the, the resolution and the policies and procedures. Um, some things that the ordinance might refer to a master plan or the art, you know, the, the, uh, some designated document that is able to be updated and, and um, refreshed for contemporary concerns. Um, I understand the notion of transparency, but um, I worry about 
you know, having to have everything um, guided by a vote for the, you know, a vote from the governing body at any given turn. Um, just that concerns me. Yeah, and I, I hear you. I think that we all feel this is a really important document and really want to pine over some of these details. Um, we do have a few more things on the agenda. So I'm thinking that we should probably do a special meeting on this so we can meet collectively in an open forum. Um, would everybody be okay? Can I make a motion that we put this on a special meeting and try to meet with the city attorney? Oh, sorry, go ahead. You can't make a, this item is not loaded. It's not an action item. You, can't ma you can say that you wanna do a special meeting, but no motion is required. Isn't that true, okay. Asking Perfect. staff to do that. Yeah, so if we could just investigate and then I'll report, uh, they'll report to us when we can have a special meeting. Um, does anybody have any more pressing questions now that we have Assistant Attorney Salazar on the line and we have her undivided attention? <clears throat> Commissioner Holton. I would like to um, either with or without some other commissioners go through and get some questions uh, answered by um, Assistant City Attorney Salazar so we can have a conversation. So some of the things that concerns that I have about language, um, you know, and how one interprets statutes and so on. Um, so I'd like to do that if that's okay. That's with... literally what I just proposed, Paul. That's what the special meeting is about. Okay, but I'm saying before we get all of us together, maybe it would be helpful if we could come to some agreement between Assistant City Attorney and myself. Personally, I think that the reason we wanna do this in open forum is for checks and balances and to make sure that these conversations are being had in open. I would feel a little awkward for you personally to have a conversation with Assistant Attorney Salazar representing the commission. Now, if you wanna have a conversation independently as an individual, that's fine, but I, I don't know how other commissioners feel. Anybody have any reservations about Paul having a private meeting about this ordinance? Should, Sorry, be, discussing, should be discussing this in an open meeting. Remember the the client of the city attorneys is the city, okay? The client of the city attorney's office is not the commissioners or the commission, it's the city. They are doing what is, has been requested by the city to be done. And uh, so any discussion you have or questions you have need to be asked in an open meeting, not individually like that. Thank they you, are not Martin. here to represent okay. you as individual commissioners, okay? Commissioner Wrinkle. That was just my question. Who represents the commissioners? Who's the legal representation for the commissioners? The, the legal representation as far as, well, and as commission, I mean, Ms. Salazar should answer that, but they are representing the city and asking for your advice in what they're doing, but you don't have a separate legal counsel. But uh, no, we're not actually a party, right? There's no legal repercussions for us as commissioners in any way. No, we are, no. I mean, the legal part of this is to make sure that we are following the rules of how to write policy, right. not and, whether or not we are protected under law. And the city attorney is, is responsibility is to decide what's legal and not, how to accomplish what the city wants within what's legal. So they wouldn't be doing, you know, they wouldn't be doing anything illegal, so. Chair, Commissioner McKay. Um, Sorry, I was just saying. Go ahead, Chair Commissioner Wrinkle. I, I I think that's a good question, especially when you're thinking about legal advice. But you, each individual commissioner, is not represented by the city attorney's office. We also don't represent individual governing body members. We represent the city as a whole, and so. It, if you were to desire an individual counsel, you would have to contact individual counsel. I, I don't quite understand that relationship or desire, but um, you know, when it comes to resolutions and ordinances, we are giving the legal opinion as to what is legal and what is not legal and what, what lies in between. And so that's really just our purview. It's not to individually represent you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Commissioner Mikulai. Um, 
Thank you, Chair Castro. Um, Assistant Attorney Salazar, I don't know if uh, Commissioner Holton was asking that he be represented. Is that, is that correct? I mean, what he was asking is in terms of him personally getting information to clarify his view yeah. as a legal scholar. Should be done. I think so. Yeah, and my discomfort is just to have a private meeting where he could perceive as being representative of the commission. Exactly, I understand that. And I personally would feel uncomfortable with having someone from the Arts Commission, if I'm getting this right, speak directly to the uh, to a, Assistant Attorney Salazar to interpret a document that, well, I mean, I, I mean, we need to have everybody's uh, input and one person getting inside information makes it very difficult to disseminate that information to people. That's right. Because That's we all right. have agendas, whether we want to admit it or not. That's part of the political economy of everyday life. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm fine to have this conversation you know, in the committee of the whole, I thought it, you know, might save some time. Um, that's exactly but the we're point. not in, we're not into saving time. So I'll withdraw my suggestion. So I, I completely understand. Chair, Director uh, oh, sorry, Commissioner Mikulak, if you want to respond. I haven't quite finished. And I, I feel that that's part of the problem is that we're getting information from one person on the commission that does not necessarily represent the real issues. And I would I'd like to have independent verification about the questions that are being raised by Commissioner Holton and by the rest of us. So thank you, now I'm done. Director come in. Chair Castro, commissioners, thank you for the robust conversation. And we will make a note of this and um, set up a special meeting. Um, so expect a doodle poll from us um, coming out and we'll figure out if it's a special meeting um, or I guess a special meeting could also be a, a retreat. So we'll just figure out a time frame. Um, it might, it probably will require multiple times, but we will put that, um, get back in touch with you um, about trying to schedule something. So I just wanted to let you know that. So your comments have been noted um, and the need for further discussion. Um, but we are again emphasizing that it is publicly noticed and um, subject to the Open Meeting Act. So thank you. Thank you. And as I look on my agenda, the next issue is also going to probably be addressed in that special meeting. So if everybody doesn't mind, I'm going to go ahead and table discussion item C, which is the reactivation of the Art and Public Places Subcommittee, because I think that's going to be part of the ordinances discussion, unless anyone would like to have that discussion now. Okay, so let's go ahead and go on to item D, which is our discussion for um, really how we're going to submit projects for this $10,000 grant that we have. Um, oh, from may, I, may I just get a clarification? Um, are you you're tabling B and C? Is that correct? We are tabling B and C, um, B and we can put it on the next agenda, but I think it's probably just going to be moved to a special meeting. To the special meeting. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to clarify. So we are in discussion item D. Um, does anybody have any questions? And I think this is gonna be directed more towards staff about what they need from us in terms of a process. That was my understanding in the last meeting that we need to figure out a process and procedure for how we are going to give this grant. I think Commissioner Viela, you're muted. Were you saying something? Um, Director Kamiyama. Chair Castro, Commissioners. So the topic for discussion um, for you all, and again, it's discussion only, um, was last time I presented a couple scenarios and I will reemphasize that again. But the reasoning behind the 10,000 was a way to address previous arts commission bodies um, so that they could do something with the community or for the community. So we were able to allocate 10,000 in this fiscal year um, as a demonstration project. Um, the question back then, and it might change with you all, 
is that the arts commissioners wanted to do something. So how you as this new body decide what that do is, is that a project that you as a commission want to develop yourselves? Or is it a scenario where you micro grant out to different organizations, in which case there has to be a system um, for receiving or announcing and receiving and evaluating applications? Um, we as staff can provide you different models for that. Um, or is there a, another iteration where you know you think of something else and how to allocate this ten thousand? But I think the discussion, as I recall from last meeting, is it was there was not consensus amongst you all about what the pathway is. Is it a micro grant or is it a project that you yourselves develop, or do you just want to support projects that are already happening? Again, if you do that, our only caveat would be is that if an organization has a project and they are also a grantee, that those projects are distinct and separate so that we're not double dipping. And that's what's something that we can help you with. Um, but really, I think the discussion for tonight amongst you all would to figure out for this round, how do you want to proceed? Knowing it's a demonstration, knowing next fiscal year, we can you can change it up. Um, and expand it, evolve it, however. Um, so I throw that all back to you for further discussion. Commissioner Biela. Uh, Chair Castro, Director Kamiyama and commissioners. I, I'm wondering if you all, if the department could give us in writing some more guidelines because I'm hearing in discussion from Director Kamiyama right now, options. Right, and so I'd like to be able to see those again. So a, pro a project, invite people to participate, um, find a project that's already in um, formation, do something ourselves. I'm not sure what, I'm actually not really clear on what all of those things mean and how they will operate. So I think it would be really great to have a document that shows us some of the options also reminds us of the timeline and then we can have um you know we can plan so that we can maybe hone in in these meetings on is this you know from start to finish like here's where we need here are the first decisions that need to be made the money needs to be spent down here so look at a timeline right and as a group agree on we're going to invite people or we're going to do a project we're going to have kids do a t-shirt project. What If we decide that on a project that's been proposed to us, then we still have to go out and find somebody else who's actually going to, um, going to you know, actually do the project too. So I think there's a lot that I'm not really clear about how to proceed with making any of these decisions. Director Kamiyama. Chair Castro, uh, Commissioner Villela, definitely can provide you some models, um, but also invite you as a body to come up with your own if any of the options don't seem to work for you all. Because there are best practices that we're already doing and there's others out in the field. And again, we are concerned about transparency and having unbiased decisions made. Um, so that's why whatever pathway is selected by you all, um, that we work with you to ensure that it's as transparent as possible. Commissioner Wrinkle. Well, I totally applaud the, the Arts and Culture Department for offering this, you know, opportunity for the Arts Commission commissioners to have their own autonomy to go and do something fabulous with this grant. Um, I do think it's hard to know, you know, how to implement it and how best to do it if we set precedent or if we, you know, feel like we could go out to the community and seek proposals. I mean, it, it just, I feel like it's crazy. Uh, we're, the minute I go out and ask somebody, it's going to be the wrong thing. So I, I just don't want to misstep and it, don't think our uncertainty is not our in, an appreciation. It is our, our just um, confusion about, you know, how to make it most transparent, how to make it um, streamlined, how to make it a call for entries, how to make it, how to implement it. So 
I'm just bear with us. I feel like it's, you're probably, you're probably like, oh my gosh, they can't figure out what to do, <laughs> but you know, there are obviously rules and requirements that we have to follow and we just need a little more guidance. Thank you. Commissioner Mickey. Uh, I agree again with Commissioner Viela. I think you've hit it right on the head that what we need is uh, not even necessarily more options, but the options that uh, Director Kamiyama has stated uh, would be helpful. But I also think this is a great explanation for why we need to define what we do as arts commissioners and how we, uh, this is why we need these parameters that we are trying to figure out at the moment. Um, so um, Director Kamiyama, I would really appreciate um, step one, step two, step three, and then here are some options because I do think that the steps are really important too. And you know, if we're going to outreach to the community, or if somebody, one of us has a project, which I think one of us already does, um, you know, how do we decide whether we would want to do that project as a or et cetera, et cetera? I mean, we need to work together as a commission in order to effectively use this money that is now give, being given to us to uh, assist the community. And I, I think I would love to have, for example, the exp expertise of the uh, arts and culture department in terms of outreach and how we actually can do that individually as commissioners. Thank you. Commissioner Viela. Uh, Chair Castro, thank you, Director Kamiyama. It would it would be great also to be um, to have the best practices in for projects like this shared with us so that we can have those guidelines as well. Um, I do recall at one point that we were, and maybe I was mistaken, but I recall that we were given there was a decision made at some point that this money be an invitational only grant. Um, and that is why I went to a couple of people who I knew had projects and asked them to give some proposals. So I, I hope that I wasn't mistaken, but you know, we're learning here and hopefully a few more guidelines will actually help with this process. Chair Castro, Commissioner Viella, I mean, Commissioner Mikulak as well. Definitely we'll get those in writing to you. Um, invitational is one methodology. So is open call, so is direct giving a uh, mini grant. So I'll just put everything down in writing, not everything. I will put a lot of this down in writing and then with your expertise from your where you sit, you may have other formulations and other strategies as well. Um, I don't presume to have knowledge of all the strategies, um, but I will put those ones that are most used and tend to be fairly, to be transparent, but there are other options as well. So it'll be a, a jumping off point for you all to discuss um, and then determine which pathway. And more importantly, what is it that you want to fund in this fiscal year? Is it a project yourself or is it a project out in the community? And those are two different pathways. So I'll put that in writing. Um, and again, that is definitely open to changing and revision and tweaking um, from you as a body. And I love the kitty cat. <laughs> awesome. Did we have any other comments? Commissioner Viela, was your hand up for another question? No, you're okay. Um, so I will move on, if that's okay with everyone, to matters from the committee. I know that Commissioner Wrinkle had a little bit of an update on what's going on, I believe, with the Mayor's Arts Facility. Hi, everyone. Um, we just had a couple of planning meetings um, about the Mayor's Awards Event Planning Committee. Um, we're looking at a couple of different options. Um, there was discussion of having, uh, it's the 30th anniversary this year, so there's a certain gravitas uh, associated with that. And so we're looking at a couple of different um, components. Um, one would be a commemorative publication that would round up and include all of the um, 
past recipients, I think it's 186 past recipients plus the current um, recipients for this year. Um, Rod's been working on that text, so compiling that material. So thank you, Rod, for doing the heavy lifting there. Um, so we have to have that you know, in digital form and then eventually in print form. Uh, there was discussion of doing a virtual um, component, um, you know, a, a, a virtual event and followed by a um, in-person event later in the year in summer slash early fall. Um, so we're hoping that we can streamline that and um, have just the, have the two components, the book and the in-person event. And we're moving forward with some ideas about how that in-person event might take place and where. And um, we're gonna be reaching out to the mayor and his office to uh, communicate with that and get his preferences and get a real, have the best um, event design possible. So stay tuned for more. And it, it's an exciting one, right? Is it the 30th you said? Yes, yes. Cool, so that'll be exciting so, to finally get to see everybody um, right, and we're looking and forward, down. and we're looking forward to the the award committee going, you know, sort of on the same track as, as we are to um, select the actual awardees. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Rinkle. Is there any other um, matters from the committee? Anybody else that would like to make any announcements? Um, I know that we have been emailing a little bit about the ten thousand dollar grant. We'll continue to talk about that. We have a special meeting coming up about ordinances and um, art in public places. Uh, we have new arts commissioners coming on. So much amazing work we did this month. Thank you guys so much. So with that, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Um, our next meeting is March 14th at 5 p.m.